Good evening, family. It's great to be here in the building. It's also great just to have another opportunity to share perspectives about giving. Sylvia and I have a few additional thoughts to share uh, in addition to what the Franklins shared. It's also a great time to remember that everything we have, everything that we are, comes from God. The Bible speaks to it the best. Psalm 24, 1 and 2 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. I'm going to turn it over to Sylvia. She's going to share, and then I'll wrap up. Thanks, Mike. Good evening, family. Um, I love the way the Holy Spirit works because I had no idea what Jordan was going to be speaking about, but I feel like what he said tonight is a great foundation with what Mike and I are going to share. So this is a part of the service where, honestly, if I'm keeping it real, I tend to tune out a little bit. When we're talking about contribution, I'm like, okay, we've set our money aside. We know what we're going to give. You know, I've been a disciple for 26 years. And so I don't think there are a whole lot of messages that I haven't heard before. And so I can tend to not really think about, okay, why is it that I'm giving? And yes, it is because Jesus died for me. I have to be careful not to just check a box, you know, like I think that we can tend to do as part of a service, but instead to make sure that I'm examining why I'm giving. And it's not just my money. It really is about giving everything. Luke 14, Jesus says, anyone who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. And any of us who are baptized disciples of Jesus, remember when we counted the cost, we said that. We said, okay, I'm willing to go anywhere and do anything for Jesus. So that means that my life's not my own. That means not just my money. It means my intellect. It means my home. It means my car. It means my time. It means everything. God entrusts us with all of those things, but he wants us to use them for his glory. So I have to ask myself, am I being a good steward of what God has entrusted me with. You know, as a parent, I think a great example is when we encourage our children to share. And don't you love it when you ask them, when you teach them to share and you see it in action, when they're giving to somebody that has a need and, and that just warms your heart. But then some of us that have more than one, there's always a child that's like, no, mine. I don't want to share. You know, as if they have a job and they got it and earned it themselves, you know? Parents give it to them and they're like, no, I don't want to share. Um, but that's how God is with us. He's our parent. He gives us the things we have. He gives us wealth. He gives us, in Deuteronomy 8, it talks about he gives us the ability to produce wealth. He gives us great jobs. He gives us children. He gives us husbands. He gives us friends. He gives us everything that we have in our lives. And he wants them to share, us to share them with the people that he puts in our lives. And so I have to ask, you know, do I say mine? Do we say mine? Are we acting like, well, I worked for this? When honestly, if God hadn't blessed you with the intellect, to work, the physical ability to work, the opportunity to work the jobs that we have to produce wealth? You know, do we remember the scripture that Mike just read that the earth and everything in it belongs to him? We're just stewards. He's entrusted it to us. And God's expectation is that we will use what he has entrusted us with to, to share with people around us in order to bring him glory. I think it's just a matter of the heart. I think that as brothers and sisters, and me personally, I always have to remember why we give when we give. Thanks. Some of you may know that I'm kind of an, an amateur poet. For special occasions, I write a poem. For the past 21 years for our anniversary, 
I, I write a poem and I read it to my wife and it's encouraging and just sort of reiterates the love that I have for her. Well, I've written a poem which sort of describes how I feel about giving and generosity and I'd like to share it with you. I call it, It Doesn't Belong to Me. It's not just about money, but all that you hold dear, including your time and talent, even your cherished career. But money is the root, a compelling temptation, oft times an evil force, an epidemic in our nation. We've all been impacted, the virus has taken a toll, but this too will pass. Let's stay focused on the goal. God's word spreads the message. It doesn't belong to me. We are the guardians holding great responsibility. When we give our cash, some may think we're odd, but we're just giving back that which belongs to God. We all have a task. Please do your part. It's not the size of your wallet but the softness of your heart. Yes, you can buy more stuff, bigger and better things, but what about meeting needs and the joy that giving brings? Make a difference with your gifts. Make an impact filled with love and act pleasing to our Father. Make him smile from above. You can't take it with you, but your legacy lasts forever. Pave the way for your children be an example through your endeavor. Don't give until it hurts. Bible says to give with cheer. We celebrate our blessings when we give throughout the year. I've seen the impact of our love. A difference giving does make. Generosity changes the world, helps those whose hearts ache. We're the richest nation on earth. God has blessed us with so much. The path for us is clear. How many lives can you touch? Where do you place your hope? Is it in your 401k? No, we must trust the Lord, especially not your IRA. Don't care how much you contribute. You can't outgive God. Paid our debt with his son, the real deal, not just a facade. Generosity season is here. Time to celebrate how we're blessed. An opportunity to give thanks, a chance to share your best. When you write those checks, remember the key. I am just a steward. It doesn't belong to me.